Since basketball season is ramping up, I thought I would post a video or two maybe on some of the finer points of shooting basketball games. Before I do, I just want to bring to your attention that I do have a complete course that's available. The link is down below in the comment section. And it's a 17 lectures, three and a half hours of instruction that's kind of a foundation for the videos that I will be posting on this channel. I want you to know I still fully intend to keep posting videos to this channel, but the course is really foundational. It kind of fills in the cracks around some of the technical aspects of shooting sports and how to use your camera as a tool and all the rest of that. So the uh, course is $10 with the coupon code that's down below. Similar courses I've seen offered for $50 or $100 that probably don't offer as much as this course does. So uh, as I said before, I'm... I, going to continue to develop this channel and I'm going to be using the proceeds from the course to actually fund a feature length film project that you will also see on this channel as I get closer to production. So we actually have an opportunity to help each other out a little bit. I can fund my movie project and you get a complete course on a beginner's level in how to gear up and, and prepare to shoot sports. And if you do use the coupon code below your assured the $10 price and I'm assured a better percentage of, of the course proceeds. And if you try to access the course with a coupon code and it doesn't accept it, it probably means that it's expired or that we've used the allotted number. So just leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll, I'll refresh the coupon code with an additional one so that you're able to access the course without any problems. So thanks for enduring that little commercial pitch. I hope you'll consider taking the course. But for now, let's talk about basketball. So high school basketball is probably one of the toughest things to shoot. Not necessarily because of the action, but because the access is so limited. I'm not here to make fun of anybody, but I, I just I watched a video one time about how to shoot high school basketball, and I just I was just chuckling to myself listening to the presenter who probably had never shot a high school basketball game in his life, talking about where to position yourself for these different types of shots. And I can tell you, I've I've probably like many of you, I've been to a dozen or so high school gyms around the country, and they're all set up the same way. The cheerleaders take up the entire end line. The referees don't want you under the basket. Basket. The teams take up one entire side of the court, and then there's just the steady, constant flow of people on the other side of the court. So shooting is, it's almost as bad as hockey. The access is brutal. So there's only really a very few places you can actually shoot high school basketball, and it's typically you're, you're tucked in between the cheerleaders and the under the basket. There's a couple of spots that the referees will let you be. And also, shooting indoors tests your ability as a photographer, and it pushes your equipment to, the, to its very limits. So you have this constant conflict between setting your ISO to levels where your pictures are bright enough to be usable, but also as you start to raise your ISO, the, your picture quality gets degraded. So there's this constant conflict. The two, the two of those things are, are at odds all the time, so you're, you're constantly fighting that. The other side of it is that you are, as you're setting your aperture, you know, obviously you want to go all the way down to 2.8, which would open up as much light as you possibly can. At the same time, that's going to affect your depth of field. So you might have to make choices about whether or not your aperture is going to be maxed out to give you the benefit of as much light as you can, but then you may not be able to have both the ball and the player's face in focus because your depth of field is so shallow. So... It's not just basketball, but it's most indoor sports. You're going to be faced with having to understand what your trade-offs are, your, your trade-off curves between aperture and ISO and shutter speed. So the good news is there's a lot of equipment that's available today that costs thousands and thousands of dollars. Years ago, you can buy for hundreds of dollars that will allow you to shoot in these indoor venues and, and get pretty good images. So what I would do is start out somewhere... F3.2, maybe ISO 8000, your shutter at 1800 or 1 640th. Gyms are going to vary in the amount of lighting, and some of them are going to be fairly good, and some of them are really going to be horrible. So you have to decide where to land on that. If you have some of the better high-end pro gear, you might be able to go with F3.5. Maybe I push ISO to 12,800 or above, and uh, a shutter speed of a, a 1,000th. 
So it's, again, it's a function of the type of equipment that you have. But one thing that is essential, that if you have the ability, the first thing you should do when you get to the venue is set your white balance. In the advanced stages, you'll perhaps want to use the temperature settings that are available in some of the higher end cameras. But most even prosumer cameras have the ability to go into the menus and set the different types of lighting. And you don't always know what they are, so sometimes you have to fiddle around with them to make sure you get the right look. But there are typically broad ranges of settings that are available. And a lot of gyms now have gone away from metal halide and sodium vapor and mercury vapor to fluorescent. And so in some cases you have to try to figure out what type of fluorescent lighting there is present in the gym and that's sometimes just a function of going into your menus and selecting uh, different ones and then you just have to basically take a picture and see you know how does it look does it does it line up real well with kind of what you're seeing with your eye so that's not an exact science but it's really important to try to match the white balance with with the type of light that's there you can use the auto white balance setting, but it just works sometimes, but it's not as reliable as, as setting it uh, when you first get there. So I'm a huge proponent, if you're a beginner, of learning skills in chunks. So I could do 10 videos on just shooting basketball alone, and that's why I titled this one Part 1. I, I don't know how many videos I'll do about shooting basketball, but there's, there's all kinds of different aspects to learn, and I'm a, a big proponent of not trying to boil the ocean. Try to just learn a few skills at a time master those and then go on to more advanced topics. So I thought we'd just start out with a couple of, or maybe three things to, to work on. So uh, there's two broad subjects here. There's shooting wide versus shooting tight. So I think from the beginner's perspective, it's okay to do both. You know, if you have a couple cameras, or you have a lens that's a wide angle. Certainly, uh, if you're shooting sports, you probably have a 70 to 200, 28. I mean, that, that's basic standard fare for anybody that wants to shoot sports. But then a 24 to 70 or the equivalent uh, is also kind of a prerequisite for, for shooting indoor sports. And, and I would say shoot a little bit with each. You know, don't, don't try to capture everything that happens when you're just starting out learning how to shoot. Just concentrate on a few things and use your different lenses and start from the outside in. Start from, from wide and then start honing your skills, moving gradually, moving in and, and trying to zoom in. Don't try to become a, a pro SI shooter with a super tight shots from the very beginning. It's a good way to get frustrated. And as you're trying to work your skills, okay, the, the first skill I would work on is the timing of the dribble. So when people ask me to look at their portfolio and the different types of photos around basketball one of the things I notice is that the the ball is in all kinds of different places you know sometimes it's flat on the floor sometimes it's in mid dribble there's no ideal necessarily perfect way to shoot the dribble but if you were to look in a hundred different basketball photos in different sports magazines or websites you'd see the vast majority of the pictures would have the ball in the player's hand close to the apex of the dribble and so that's I think a good place to start is train yourself to understand what what that timing has to feel like with the shutter lag that's on your camera that's something that you're gonna have to learn you're gonna have to feel almost uh, what that's what that has to be and anticipate where you have to start pushing that shutter in order for it to actuate in time for that ball to be back up in the players hand when they're dribbling so that's the first thing Second thing is also related to timing, and that is that shot of the guard coming around the defender, driving toward the basket. And so that's the next step up. It's a combination of catching the dribble back up in the player's hand, and also that face looking up at the basket or looking toward you or toward where he's, he or she is heading, and to get that expression. So there's two facets to it. There's the timing of the dribble, and then there's the timing of the player coming around the defender and not having hands in the way or, or other players. And that's very tricky, but that's the essence of shooting basketball. And then the third skill is on the jump shot or the hook shot or, or just the players shooting. It's an art form by itself because you don't think about this a lot, but as the player is shooting, their arms are coming up and in many cases blocking their face. So the ideal shot, of course, would be to have both the player with the ball at the apex, either in his or her hand, or just leaving 
the hand while still being able to see the face and the concentration and the expressions and, and all of that stuff. So I think if you're looking for three skill sets to, to work on, those three are probably the stock and trade of shooting basketball. Obviously, there's a, there's a lot more to it, but learning how to do that uh, is probably going to elevate the quality of your pictures almost immediately. So in terms of how to approach those three things, you can break that down into little chunks within each task. So if you're looking at concentrating on the dribble, it's directly related to two things. It's timing and it's that unobstructed visibility. And so there's a big chunk of understanding not only the flow of the game, but the role of each of the players in the game and how they typically react to different situations. And this is almost a sixth sense at times when you're watching the game, you're watching the action unfold. And if, if, when you do this long enough, you will start to understand when that opening presents itself, you're seeing that opening at about the same time the player sees it and he or she decides to drive into the opening. And that's when you are on high alert. That's when you are looking for not just the action of that player making his or her move, but it's also the periphery. It's in your peripheral vision that is looking for the arms and legs and other obstructions to move out of the way so that you have not only a clean shot at the player and his or her face, but also to be able to anticipate the timing of the ball coming off the floor and back up into the player's hands. So that's enough for now. That's an awful lot to absorb at once. As I said, there's probably several videos that could be done for each one of these skill sets. So just take those three for now. If you're shooting basketball this season, take some extra time and some extra care in focusing on those three skill sets. I'll be posting additional videos around basketball this season, so I hope you'll check back. Good luck, and I'll see you in the next lecture.